Hey everybody, Greg here at VideoMaker. Today I'm going to answer the question, what is the difference between rolling shutter and global shutter? So before I get too far into that, I just want to make sure that everyone's clear on what a shutter does. So the idea of shutter and shutter speed is it controls how long each frame, each individual frame, now that's regardless of frame rate, which is how many still images every second are going to be played back, well, each one of those frames has to be exposed for a certain amount of time. So the shutter is basically what controls when a certain frame is exposed to light and when it's not. So in old school shutters, it was a rotary kind of like this. So if this is our piece of film or our sensor here, let me bring this in. If this is our piece of film or our sensor, it would basically cover it up so that the film could advance and then it would basically reveal it to light for a certain amount of time. So in digital shutters, it's a little different, obviously. They don't necessarily have that physical rolling, sh physical spinning shutter, I should say. But what they do is pixels turn on to absorb light and then turn off to not absorb light. So basically the length of time that the pixel is turned on is gonna be your shutter speed. So for this, the rest of this example, I'm going to sort of use a 1 48th of a second shutter speed as an example, just to keep it consistent. So um, a global shutter essentially for a digital sensor turns all the pixels on and all the pixels off at the same moment in time. So it would look something like this, on, off, on, off, on, off. So in the example of 1 48th of a second shutter speed, it would be on for 1 48th of a second and then off until it needed the next frame and then on for 1 48th of a second and then off all at once. So what happens is depending on your shutter speed, it can affect how much motion blur is in your shot, right? So if my finger is moving really fast and it's on while it's moving really fast across, it's going to see a little bit of that blur and that can be normal and look natural but you're not gonna suffer from what we call skew, which is if something's moving really fast, it's still capturing everything all at the same time. So you're not gonna get any additional sort of weird skewing artifacts. Now, a rolling shutter on the other hand is a little bit different. So that's gonna look something like this. Again, excuse my crude props here. So the pixels would be off, not accepting light. And then what would happen is instead of all at once, you might start with the top line of pixels. So let's say the top line of pixels turns on and the bottom are still off. And then we're basically going to progress and start turning more and more lines of these pixels on. And there might even be a time where all the pixels are on and accepting light. But eventually, once those top portion of the pixels have been open for 1 48th of a second, we're going to turn those off but the bottom ones got opened later, so they still need to be on for a little bit. So as we go down and start turning off these lines, we eventually get to the point where they're probably all off again, and then we start the whole process over. The key here is each pixel would be open to light for 1 48th of a second. So the problem arises when, if this top pixel turns on and my finger's right here, and then we start scanning downward, but by the time we turn this bottom pixel on, I'm already here, well, instead of snapshotting all at once in 1 48th of a second now, my finger has moved some. And in fact, as it moves down here, it's moving a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So it ends up looking like this in your final frame. So it's got that skew to it. Or if you're panning really fast, it can do that as well. And we call that wobble sometimes. So the important thing to note is that a global shutter turns all on, turns all off at the same motion instant in time. So your shutter speed still is going to affect how much motion blur it has, but not really be affected by fast moving objects and creating skew. A rolling shutter, now all of these aren't created equally. So how fast, let's turn this on again, how fast this process happens is going to affect how much um, artifact type, you know, skew and wobble you're going to get for fast motion. So if it goes this fast, you know, it's not going to be too bad. And if it goes a little bit slower, well, it's going to be a little bit more noticeable. You can see my props getting torn up here, but, um, and similar with a film shutter, it's important to note that even film, old school film had a rolling shutter. So if you look here, the top left corner here is getting exposed first, but it's also eventually I'll get there. 
it's also getting covered first, right? So I mean, a little crude, but it's getting covered first. And while this bottom right portion is getting revealed last, it's also getting covered last. So still each part of that um, frame is getting exposed for the same amount of time, but they are getting exposed not at the same instant in time. So um, that's why some um, you know, rolling shutter cameras have more skew to them and some have less. So it's something that most manufacturers will promote if they say we have a really fast readout speed is what they'll sometimes say. It means even though it might not be reading everything at once, it's reading it so fast that you're not gonna really be susceptible to that. So hopefully my crude demonstration helps you understand and sort of visualize that. I'm Greg Olson with Video Maker, and hey, don't forget for uh, more uh, e-newsletters and great answers to questions like these, go ahead and click on the link and sign up, and uh, you know we'll send them right to your inbox so you can sort through all that good information that Video Maker has for you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>